So Bill, we got this light back here, 24,000 watts. I hear we need a ballast? What is a ballast? Yes, uh, we need a ballast because it's different from a normal uh, tungsten filament type of light, of light bulb. Yeah, on, a, on a tungsten light bulb, it has a filament, and that filament is, is, is designed to run on 120 volts, 208, 240, whatever the manufacturer you know, still chooses to use. And what you do with that is you stick it into a socket, and you take a pair of wire, you know, and you go into a power source, and then you fire up the, 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 the globe, and it glows. Okay. Tungsten filaments, with their design right, they will operate at 120 volts and give you 3,200 degrees Kelvin. Now, when you go to dim a, uh, a tungsten uh, globe, okay, you bring the voltage down, and what happens there is, is that the, the color temperature of a tungsten globe will go down, it'll get warmer. So instead of being 32, it'll be 3,000, 2,800, depending on how far down mm -hmm. you dim it. Plus, the intensity goes down also. Okay. Now, on an HMI, it's a completely different animal. An HMI has two electrodes which means that it needs something to get it started and it needs a regulated power supply in order to produce, to give it the power to, to, main, to give it a certain wattage that the globe is, is designed for. You just can't take this and plug it into the wall and expect it to work. It won't work because there's no filament, there's no continuity between the two electrodes because there's a gap. Mm -hmm. This is where the ballast comes in. What the ballast does is it sets it up, once you hit the start button, it sets up a voltage across the globe, around 360 to 400 volts, okay? And what that does is then the ballast tells the igniter to turn on, and so the igniter then puts out as high as 65,000 volts to jump the gap. Now, once it jumps the gap, the mercury ionizes, okay, and, and produces a current flow between the two electrodes, which the ballast detects. Now, once the ballast detects the current flow through the globe, it turns the igniter off because we don't need it anymore because now the current is flowing through the globe. Okay, now, what the ballast does, it regulates the amount of power that is going through the globe itself because when the globe is cold and starting up, the voltage drop across the globe is around 50 volts. And if you have that 360 or 400 volts there, on a, on a non-regulated supply, it would end up blowing up the globe because it would be too much current. But the ballast regulates the amount of current going through the globe, so it keeps it at a certain level. Uh, for example, this, this is an 88 or 90 amp globe, it will regulate somewhere in the 90 to 100 amps while it slowly, slowly builds up, as it, as it slowly builds up its, its, its light intensity and color temperature. Now, color temperature on an HMI globe will start out anywhere from 15,000, 20,000 degrees Kelvin. Then as it warms up, as it gets brighter, the voltage drop across the globe starts to build, and it ends up operating at the 272 volts that the manufacturer has, that has designed it for. But the ballast has to regulate that. So once it sees 272 volts and 88 or 90 amps, it says, okay, we're up to the specification of the globe, and that's where it will put out the 24,000 watts and also the color temperature of 5,600 degrees Kelvin. Now, an HMI requires, okay, an AC voltage going through the, going through the globe, through the globe, which means, AC means alternating current, which means that the current in the globe goes in one direction across the electrodes, in one direction for uh, eight point so milliseconds, and then goes and reverses in the other direction. That's why they call it alternating current. The current alternates back and forth. Now, on a magnetic ballast, well, that we used to have in the old days, the magnetic ballast used was plugged into the wall, and it had what they call a sine wave, which means that the intensity and the color temperature of the globe varies 120 times a second. All right. Well, if you're shooting fast, a fast scene, at a shutter speed greater than 24 frames per second, you will end up catching the time when the globe is at its minimum output and that's at its maximum output and you will get this strobing effect. And you will notice a slight color temperature change as it, as it goes down into the it dips in, in the 60 cycle and back up to the, to the crest of the 60 cycle. Now, these square wave ballasts that we have, these electronic square wave ballasts, 
still allows the current to flow back and forth, you know, 120, second, 120 times a second. But it is a square wave, which means that it instantaneously changes current direction 120 times a second. Okay, but it does it instantaneously, which, which does not allow the globe intensity to go to go down at all. It stays at the same intensity. So now you can run a shutter speed at greater than 24 frames per second for high speed, and you will not get this flicker or strobing effect like you would with the, with the magnetic ballast. Bill, very informative. Got Thank one, you. I get one more question. Okay. 24,000. Can we go a little bit bigger? Is there something in the wind that I should know about? I know we just finished this, but... There's rumors that somebody might be working on or thinking about working on a 36K. Wow. Just rumors, though. Well, I'll tell you what, I better let you go so you can start working on that. It'll be a, probably be a 30-inch Fresnel lens instead of a 24 that we have here. Maybe even a 36-inch Fresnel lens. Wow. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I better let you go. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's it for today, and I hope you guys find this very, very informative. And go ahead and write to us, email us at uh, molestagemole.com, and we'll take care of all your questions for you. Thank you very much. Bye.